and welcome back to another Transformation Tuesdays video. If you're new here, I am Sonia and you are tuning into a spiritual series that I do on my channel every single Tuesday. Welcome to all of my new subscribers. I hope you guys have been enjoying all of my content on my channel and I hope you guys continue to get involved with everything that I put out on my channel. But as you can see by today's title, I am talking about something that I know for a fact that I myself and many other people struggle with and that is struggling to read the Bible. A lot of pastors says when you read the Bible, it reads you as well. It tells you a lot about yourself. It tells you a lot about God. It tells you a lot about the people of God who have gone through the same things that we still go through today. And it's not something that you can just take lightly or just read just for the heck of it, right? As much as I know all those things, as much as I am fully aware and understanding of all those things, I still struggle for a various amount of reasons to commit myself every single day to take the time and really engorge myself into it and study it. Now, I want to get into a little bit of why it's so important for us to read the Bible on a daily basis. And anybody who has a relationship with God knows that the things that we are supposed to do, the right things that he calls us to do, it's always such a struggle. The devil is always trying to keep you from living your best life in Christ. Like, he's such a hater. I can't with him, okay? We already know the scripture that I read earlier, Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 says that we should meditate on God's law or his word day and night but if we are christians and we have our own relationship with god and we go to church and we do all these things that we feel like we're supposed to do why is it important that we have to read the word day and night like why is it important that i can't just hear a sermon at church and that be enough for me on that day so i have five reasons of why it's important to read your word day and night now these are just five i'm sure there are many more reasons but i tried to pick some five general reasons okay so the first one is it is our blueprint to navigating this life so the Bible stories are still relevant in today's society. A lot of the stuff that went on back then is still going on now. It might be a little bit of a different twist or a different context, but it is still applicable to today in 2019. There's literally nothing new under the sun. There's nothing that surprises God. He knows everything about anything, pretty much, okay? So God gives us constant instructions, laws, direction, and reassurance about what we can expect in this life from him, from others, and even from ourselves. It is a living word of truth that allows you to see a glimpse into the future and the past. So it allows you to see what has happened before and what is to come. Okay, Revelations is my favorite book in the Bible. Don't be afraid to read it because it's lit, okay? <laughs> Timothy 3 verses 16 through 17 says, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So it literally equips us for everything that we might experience from the good to the bad in this world. Number two says it teaches us about who God is. So the Bible shows us just what type of God God is. He's so many great things that there are so many ways and names to describe him. And you guys know that. The Bible tells us that God is whatever you need him to be in order to lead you to salvation and transformation in Christ. So God is the I am. If you guys have heard Moses' story when the, when the pharaohs were asking him who he was, he said, I am that I am. I am who I is and who I will be and all, all of that. That's me. I me. Period. So God is literally anything that you need him to be. He is a father. He's a mother. He's a sibling. He's family. He's a friend. He's a leader a teacher, a healer, a consoler, a provider, and a protector. He's forgiving, he's convicting, he's merciful and proficient. He's sovereign and he's a gifter. He's a lender, he's a doctor, he's a judge, he's a jury, he's everything. He is who he is, which is all things and more. And the Bible gives you an account of all those things to remind us of his goodness. So God is everything. He cannot be limited into just male or female. He is all 
the above. He encompasses all things. He is spirit. He is a deity. There's no beginning or end. He is everything. And so the Bible shows you several accounts of who he is. And I think that whatever it is that you need him to be in that moment, you find those scriptures in that word that speaks to you the most. And we're gonna talk about how God speaks to you through scripture as well. So number three says, it blesses us with better traits, such as discernment, forgiveness, servitude, meekness, strength, confidence, boldness, and more. So the Bible fills us with words and stories that help us become a better us. What did Jesus say to the woman at the well? If you remember in John, the story of Jesus sitting at the well and there was a woman who came up and he asked her for water. He said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And that's John 14. God's word literally brings life back into the dead things in our worlds. It teaches us to die of our flesh every single day and be made new in him so that we return back to our childlike faith that allows us to be able to be taught and constructed the way that God intended us to be. Ultimately, it makes us better people in Christ. It teaches us how to navigate this world and be better people for us. It teaches us how to heal what's in here and be better in here so that we can project that outwardly. Okay. Number four, it shows God's promises to us. God's promises to us are all throughout the Bible about this life and the next. Revelations is a whole book dedicated to our future with God after this world is dead. The best gift slash promise of God ever given to us is eternal life with Christ. Mark 10 verse 29 through 31 says, truly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mothers or fathers or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sister and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time digging into that scripture. It's a lot there, it's a lot of meat there, but that's what I'm talking about. You can't just read verses like that and be like, okay, I read my word for the day. No, you are gonna have to study. There's a lot of meat. A lot of meat up in there okay but we're gonna move forward for the sake of staying on topic in this video but it's not just about earthly possessions it's not just about possessions on this earth his promises also include things such as how we will endure and overcome and if you want to learn more about endurance and overcoming situations you can read these three scriptures that i'm going to give james 1 2 through 4 first peter 5 verse 10 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 through 18. So all of those talk about endurance and overcoming. He also promises us that we will be transformed. And if you want a reference for that, you can read 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. You can read Romans chapter 8, verse 29, or 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Again, he also promises us that we will experience eternal life. So references for that. Second Peter chapter three, verse 13. John chapter 14, verses two through three. And Revelation chapter 21, verse four. And another thing that he promises us is that he will always be with us. In reference to that, you can read Isaiah 41, verse 10, James 4, seven through eight, and Deuteronomy 31, verse eight. And so much more. God promises us so much more than that, but those are just some examples and some scriptures to reference um, those promises. So all throughout the Bible, he promises us of things. And God even promises us of the negative things that will happen if we don't turn to him. He promises us of the things that might take place in this world, the wrath, the anger, the failure, all these things that will take place if we turn our back on him and then he also promises us the goodness of him the goodness of his glory the goodness of his mercy it's important for us to know those things so that we can hold on to those things as we're going throughout life and number five he speaks through us through his word and i've said this before in other videos a lot of times 
when we're seeking an answer, when we're praying for an answer, we are literally waiting for the clouds to open up like they did on the Lion King and a strong deep voice come down and give you a, a word. And <laughs> that doesn't always happen because a lot of times the answers to our questions and to our problems are in the word already. Like I said, there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing that surprises God. Abraham has gone through the same thing that people today go through. David has gone through the same thing that people today go through. Job, same thing. Esther, same thing. These stories are in the Bible because they are relevant to today and will be relevant for forever. And so there's nothing that you've gone through. It, it I know it might not seem like it is relatable, but there's nothing that you've gone through that is not in the Bible and God doesn't have a word for it. The Bible talks about infidelity. It even talks about rape. It talks about sexual immorality. It talks about abuse. Um, it talks about death. It talks about all these crazy things of the world that will make us feel isolated and alone and make us feel like we don't have anything to apply to that, how we can overcome those things but it's all in the Bible. Everything that is written in the Bible is an honest love letter from God to us. It is his way of saying, I know, I hear you, I see you, I love you, now hear me. Here's what I say about it. There's so many stories, like I said, in the Bible of people going through the same things we do today with slightly different circumstances, slightly different contexts. And God wants us to know that he is the answer. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So God literally tells us how to navigate this world, how to navigate our feelings, how to navigate our emotions right in the scripture. It even talks about work ethic. You guys know we've talked about that. It talks about money. It talks about life, everything. It talks about depression and suicide and just, it, it encompasses all things. And so if you're ever looking for an answer from God, it is more than likely, okay, I can guarantee you that it is in the word somewhere. And there is somebody's story in the word that you can actually relate to. So those are just five reasons of why it's important for us to read the word every single day. But there's one key thing that I want to reiterate and I am learning, I'm in the middle of doing this myself, is we have to be doers of the word, not just listeners. So we know the importance of reading the word now, okay? And now I do have a technique that is working for me. So now what I do is I actually use an app that I have been given access to through my church, which is called Right Now Media. And Right Now Media is a wonderful app that has everything that you would need to help you study the Word of God. It has videos, it has lessons, it has um, reading challenges and all sermons, everything on there. It's a whole app helping you understand God and how to read the word of God. And so there are actual videos on there that um, you can type in how to read the book of James and it will give you a summary of the book so that you have a little bit better of an understanding of what you're reading before you dive into it. And I know that has helped me a lot because like I said, the Bible isn't necessarily written in a sequential timeline. Some things do bounce around. So it, it's helpful to kind of know, okay, what am I reading? What time frame were they in back then? Um, and, and why is this relevant to another book in the Bible? And so I will look at that first. I will look at that short video first, and then I will go in and start to read the scriptures. And usually this video that I watch that teaches you how to read this book will have like a little mini summary for each chapter in that book. So then I can apply those scriptures to say, oh, okay, this relates to what they said in the summary. This is what this means. And then it allows me to prompt myself with questions like what does this word mean for that time frame? So then I'll go back and look at words in the Hebrew or look at words in the Greek so I can make sure I'm getting the best understanding as possible. So I figured out a study technique on how to meditate and really dive into what the Bible means. And it actually has been working for me. I've been doing it for a couple weeks now and it's actually been working. I have dedicated time during my lunch um, break to do this every day at work. And if I don't get it done during my lunch break, I have to force myself to do it when I get home. 
And here's the thing about that. I feel like a lot of times I have kind of gotten aggravated with myself because reading the Bible can sometimes feel, feel like a chore. And I have felt like, well, this is something that I should be passionate about, like something I should really wanna do and I should be excited about that. That's not always realistic, okay? When you're practicing a, a task, all right? When you are trying to get better at something, uh, practice doesn't always feel good. Think about athletes. I believe that sometimes athletes don't be wanting to practice. <laughs> you know, there's, there's some times where you have to push yourself and say, okay, I don't feel like doing it today, but I need this. I need to practice this. I need to get good at this skill. I need to develop diligence in, in this. Um, and so I have to force myself to do it, even though I don't feel like it. So don't get ashamed if you've shared that same feeling where, you're, where you kind of feel like, dang, reading the Bible, feels like a chore for me. It's something that I, I have to force myself to do every day. And you know, God is so good that I should wanna be in his word every day. That's not necessarily realistic when you're trying to build a skill, okay? When you're trying to build the skill of being diligent and understand God's word, sometimes you're just gonna have to force yourself to do it and to, and to make time for it and to sacrifice time for it. And that's okay because it's the fact that you're doing that it's the sacrifice, it's the diligence, and you telling yourself, regardless of how I feel, I'm gonna sit down and read this word anyway. That's what God appreciates. Because there are a lot of people who can read his word every day and don't take it into heart, right? But if you are really saying, okay, I know this is a requirement, it says it in his word that we should be meditating on it day and night. And I wanna do it the right way and it might be tough for me. I might have to figure out a couple different techniques to get it together, but I'm going to sit down at this time using this technique and I'm going to study it. I'm going to review it. I'm going to implement it in my life, okay? So James chapter one, verses 22 through 24 says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. So God says that we cannot just listen to or read the word and not apply it to our lives. God wants us to actually live out what he instructs us to do. For if anyone doesn't, we are deceiving and lying to ourselves. We cannot be whole Christians and meet our mark without reading, studying, meditating on, and applying God's word. For if we don't, we are looking right at the best person God has called us to be as we are looking at the word, choosing to turn away from it, and forgetting what our true selves are like. So you guys heard me earlier say that one of the reasons why you should read the word is because it teaches us how to be better us. So when you're reading the word and you're educating on yourself about what God says of how to be a better person, how to be a better Christian, how to better navigate this world, when you're reading that and you're just reading it and not implementing it, you're seeing who God wants you to be in his word and then you're turning away from all of that education that you just got and doing your own thing. That's pretty much what that talks about. How often have we forgotten our way or who God has called us to be? How quickly do we forget the word God gives us through the spirit, church, and others? How can you implement something you consistently forget how to do? How can you implement something that you don't ever practice, okay? But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doings. And that's James 1 verse 25. And so pretty much God is telling us, don't just go to church and, and hear a sermon and not do what the, what the pastor is saying. Don't just listen to the Bible app, let it read it out loud to you and not actually implement it. Don't take all these notes and not study them. Be doers. He's giving you tools. He's giving you the necessary things that you are needing. And this is for me, I'm talking to myself too, because I, I haven't gotten this all figured out, y'all, <laughs> okay? Don't just listen, don't just read, implement that stuff.
I want to talk about this new series that I want to do within my Transformation Tuesday videos because I know why it's important to read the Bible. I know why it's important to be a doer and not a hearer. So what I want to do is I want to do a Bible series to make sure that I'm not only reading the word, but implementing the word in my life, okay? So I want to start this Bible series within my Transformation Tuesday videos, and I want to address all the things that I struggle with by applying God's word to it and actually implementing God's word into my life. So I wanna address things like my anxiety and fear, my doubting and disbelief, my profanity, okay? My laziness and procrastination, my self-esteem and lack of confidence and more. There's so much more. I want to actually look up and study what the word says about all those areas. And so within this Bible series on my Transformation Tuesday videos, it will be a video dedicated to every single one of these areas. So my next video will be talking about anxiety and fear. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to go into the Bible and study what the word of God says about anxiety and fear. And I want to talk to you guys about that. But then I also want to make a plan about how I'm going to implement what God's word says about anxiety and fear into my life to overcome my anxiety and fear, if that makes sense. So I'm going to tackle every single one of those things that I listed. I'm going to study and give you what God's word says about it. And I'm gonna make a plan to apply that scripture to my life in order to overcome those struggles, okay? So that is my plan for my next about five or six videos. So the next couple of months when I upload a video, it's going to be talking about one of those topic areas and I'm going to be really trying to motivate myself to study what God's word says because I want to give you guys exactly what his word says, but I can't just preach to you guys. I actually have to be a doer, okay? I can't lead you guys if I'm not actually overcoming things, overcoming the things that I'm talking about. So I'm excited for you guys to take the journey with me on doing so. I'm super excited because I know a lot of you deal with those same things that I listed as well. So I'm excited for us to be able to get through those things together and really study and see what God's word says about it. And finally implement that into our lives so that we no longer struggle with those things. I know I'm tired of struggling with that stuff. I don't know about y'all, okay? <laughs> So now we're going to do our closing prayer. I did not write my closing prayer down this time. So my eyes will be closed and my head will be bowed. I encourage you guys to close your eyes and bow your heads with me as well. Dear Lord Jesus, we claim that we know what good God you are based off of our own experiences, which are true. But how much more of a great God you are that you show us in your word, Lord God. There's no way of getting around reading your word. We will never be the best people that we know you want us to be without reading your word. Your word educates us on so much. It educates us about this life. It educates us about ourselves, about the people around us, about our future and about our past. Lord God, it educates us so much about who you are and all the great and wonderful things that you are, Lord God. It debunks superstition and assumptions, Lord God. It gives us fact. Your word is the truth, the true living word. It is the only truth that we have in this earth, Lord God. There is no ignorance or anything of lack in your word. Father, we need it. We need it as food. It is literally our bread of life. You feed us so much through your word every single day. Lord God, your word helps us to defeat our giants and defeat the devil and defeat ourselves, Lord God. It helps us to overcome those mountains and overpower those giants that keeps us bound in slavery and in sin and serving idols, Lord God. It helps us to know everything that you've ever said about us and everything that you've ever said about this life, which is the truth. Lord God, give us the spirit that yearns for your word. Give us the spirit that craves your word and desires your word. Give us the spirit that hungers for what your word says. Help us to develop strategies and, and plans to better understand what your word means and how you want us to apply it to our individual lives, Lord God. Everything that we've ever gone through is in that Bible, Lord God. Everything that we will ever go through is in your word. Every answer is right there in your scripture, Lord God. That's where your spirit lies. That's where your love lies. Not just in us, Lord God, but in that great book that you give us to navigate this world. Help us to be better stewards of your word, Lord God. 
Help us to accomplish and overcome everything that we need to to be our better selves, Lord God. But it starts right there in the word. Let us not be distracted, Father God. I rebuke and bind any distraction that keeps us away from your word that we need every single day, the living water, Lord God. And in your name, I do pray. I love you, Lord God, and amen. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're just as excited as I am at starting this new Bible series on my channel. If there's any other topics that you think that I should include in my series, please leave them in the comment box below. If you have yet to subscribe to my channel, definitely hit that subscribe button, like this video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.